Chapter 30 The Dick That Lit the Match That Set the World on Fire Elton John had finished crooning Rocket Man, and Tom Petty was now singing about how he wasn't backing down. Nicholas Green stepped onto the rally stage and moved directly to the podium behind portable walls of bulletproof glass. In light of Petty's recurring anti-war sentiment, Justine spared a quick thought for irony. Rallying a bunch of mouth-foaming coconuts over a state's right to weapons of mass destruction probably wasn't what Petty meant as he encouraged people to stand their ground. She stood in the stage wing, watching as Green, flanked by all those American flags, adjusted the microphone. Someone turned Petty down, and Green spread his arms wide, bathing his rabid followers with that megawatt smile. The rowdy red hats fell silent, turning their full attention to their ideologue-in-chief. The monster cock pulsed along with Justine's heartbeat, the voiceless whisper screaming to rip off Green's head before tearing into the red hats. Justine took a deep breath as she heard Dorian King step into the stage wing behind her. You can't always get what you want, Justine thought sternly in response to the voiceless whisper invoking that overplayed Rolling Stones anthem that preceded both Petty and Elton John. She replayed the lyrics about still getting what you need, and the monster cock dribbled a little bit of warmth against her thigh. Fine. Hello, my friends, Nicholas Green said, his voice amplified with booming resonance across the surface lot. The rallying red hats erupted in whoops and cheers. My dear friends, yes, I love you too, and look at you, all of you beautiful people, my most loyal of followers. You know, let me tell you, we're not stopping at the governor's mansion. I can promise you that right now. We're going to do great things, you and I. Great things, fantastic things. Dorian King stood alongside Justine and they watched silently as Nicholas Green bloviated in front of his fans. Any time I have even the slightest doubt, you know when those fake news bastards start twisting your words or the deep state throws everything they've got at you just to get you to stop talking, I only have to take one look at you beautiful people, and I remember what we're fighting for. The Red Hats exploded with cheers, pumping fists, and rally cries. Because my message, Green shouted over the crowd, is your message, the message of the people. And we're going to take this message to the whitest of all houses. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And we're going to win this thing no matter who stands in our way. And we're going to win bigger than anyone has ever won before because our message is strong and our message is clear. And yes, goddammit, our message is powerful. Green unclipped the microphone and held it out to the crowd, prompting them to say the words with him. The voices thundered in unison. Make America America shoot shoot straight straight again! again! Green nodded as he returned the microphone to its clip. That's right, that's right. We're going to keep things so straight that my opponent, Crooked Carl, and his alphabet soup, limp-wristed supporters are going to run home and cry on the internet while we're busy out here fixing our beautiful state. And then, yeah, yeah, I see you. And then the country. Because we are taking this message all the way to the White House, my friends. Yes, sir, Lord Massa, Massa. Those blue states will be drowning in liberal tears once our message goes national. But you know what? You know who doesn't believe in the message of the people? You know who doesn't shoot straight? Justine's stomach sank as she finally realized Nicholas Green's game plan. She glanced at Dorian, who was as blank-faced and oblivious as ever. Trust me, you're gonna be just as surprised as I was, Green said. It's almost beyond belief, but I assure you, 
my old friend the CEO of Vector Defense, and the host of this very rally, Dorian King does not shoot straight. No, he certainly doesn't, and I can only assume he wants to cancel this rally, our rally, because he is afraid of our message. Dorian King, little Dory Dum Dum, I used to call him when we were kids. Green turned and gestured to Dorian. He's right over there, hiding in the shadows, too scared to face you, but let me tell you, this guy right here, oh, he was always scared back in the day. And I guess things haven't changed a whole hell of a lot, have they, little Dory Dum Dum? Just one big scaredy cat, right? Oh, oh, and uh, tell me, what, what, what's the other word for cat? The crowd started shouting, Pussy, and Green flashed that megawatt smile. That's right, that's right, yes. Well, you all said it, not me. Green gestured again to Dorian. Dory, come on, step on out here with me. We're just chatting with some old friends, and I think they'd really like to hear from the horse's mouth why you want to cancel the rally. Green paused for a thoughtful moment. Or the cat's mouth, as the case may be, right? In an uncharacteristic move, Justine wrapped her fingers around Dorian's wrist. She didn't think he would step out onto the stage, but she felt it important to remind Dorian that he wasn't standing there alone. She was pretty sure they had never physically touched before, and she was surprised that Dorian had no reaction to her grabbing his wrist. Oh no, little Dory Dum Dum doesn't want to come out and play. Green said, the crowd hooting and hollering and demanding that Dorian step out. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. The big kitty doesn't have to come out if he doesn't want to. Yes, Dorian King and Vector Defense will have to answer for this, for canceling our rally, for putting their foot on the neck of our first and second amendment rights, for using the iron fist of his corporation to squeeze the life out of this campaign and crush the voice of the people. But what little Dory Dum Dum doesn't understand is that he has no power. Real power now. Real power doesn't belong to people like him or even me. It doesn't belong to corporations or the military or military industrial complex that little Dory Dum Dum is so comfortable suckling at the teat of. Power. Real power. Powerful power. Belongs to you. The people, my people, you all have the power, and you always have, because power belongs to the people. The red hats ate it up, and Justine's grip on Dorian's wrist tightened. The monster cock was throbbing in anticipation, twisting down her thigh and flirting a little too close with the hem of her skirt. Gunshots started going off, and Dorian turned a curious eye to the crowd. That sinking feeling in Justine's stomach turned sour. There was no way Vector Defense Event Security Protocol would have allowed anyone onto the campus with firearms. Which could only mean that whoever had been making all those campaign donations behind Dorian's back must have fucked up today's event security which would also explain all the unfamiliar security staff Justine had seen since arriving that morning. More gunshots rang out, and Nicholas Green turned toward Dorian and Justine, giving them a smarmy, shitty grin. Justine took a step backward, pulling at Dorian's arm. I don't know, Green said, adopting an acidic tone of bemusement. You know, I really don't know. Little Dory Dum Dum wants to evict us. He wants to kick us out for having the guts to stand up for what we believe is right. But I don't know. I think you all might have something to say about that. And even though Nicholas Green kept talking, the crowd drowned out his booming voice. Justine pulled at Dorian's arm again. Sir. Dorian didn't turn away from Green. His face was still expressionless. Hmm. Run.